how researchers in economics can help policymakers and decision makers. It seems that linking academia to the world outside academia is difficult. It's as if we don't speak the same language. And quite often I even witnessed during seminars people asking, but did you reach to the policymakers, the politicians, the entrepreneurs, and show them your results? And often it resulted in a, just a good laugh from the researchers, as if it was not even possible, on, or even if they didn't think about it. And in my opinion, this leads to really grave inefficiencies. One aim of this channel is to link the world of academia with the world outside academia, to reduce those inefficiencies and to help communicate between the two worlds. So together, let's see what researchers in economics have to offer to the world outside academia. And to answer this, I will use three axes. Those axes were presented by my supervisor during a conference called Policy for Peace two weeks ago. And I will base this video on those three axes. The first axis is that we are able to do some policy evaluation. So by using statistics to properly evaluate the effect of a policy. Second, we are able to do some prediction, to use statistics to predict the effect of a policy in different regions. And finally, we can also have a broad view, a broad perspective on, of a problem. And I will illustrate all those three points with different concrete examples, speaking about research, but concrete applications of those research. Let's go. The first thing we have to offer is good and quality policy evaluation. Basically, most during most of our studies, we studied math and statistics, which allows with this deep knowledge of statistics to understand and disentangle the effects and properly quantify and measure the effect of a policy. Clearly, statistics are our subfield of math, but they are really a tool to better understand the world, to disentangle the effects, and with the math, to identify properly the effect of one factor that might be completely entangled with others. Let me give you an example. In Zurich, there is a team of researchers who studied how to optimally allocate the refugees that arrive in Switzerland in different regions in order to maximize the probability of being employed. And it seems that with the integration and with the long-term life plans, work is the most important factor for refugees. And before this strategy, in Switzerland, refugees arrive and are allocated randomly between the different regions in Switzerland. And with their program, they actually built a program and used machine learning to see how to optimally allocate those refugees, a new refugee arriving, based on different characteristics, the gender, the origin, age, and so on and so on, and based on the characteristics of the destination, the region of destination, and they observe massive improvements of employment of those who have been allocated using this new mechanism. But again, the idea here is not only to suggest a new policy, but it's also to assess the effect. And to do so, they did what we call a randomized control trial. Basically, exactly the same thing you will do in a lab when you want to assess the effect of a drug. And to do so, they picked randomly in the new refugees that are arriving, a subset, a sample of refugees completely random. And one part of those uh, refugees were allocated as, with the previous method, just randomly in Switzerland. And one and the other part, the treatment group, has been allocated using the new method. Moreover, they used a double blind method, meaning that the officer who is giving the advice and allocating the, the refugee has no clue if the, the process to, of allocation was random or was with the new method. And the refugee, the person arriving, has no clue as well if he's in the treatment group, the new method, or the old method, the control group. 
This reduce many potential biases as the observer biases, just by knowing that it's the new method, maybe you think that it's work better or, or worse, and you act differently or you report information differently. So you get rid of those issues with this double blind method and the fact that it's completely randomized, randomized control trial, get also rid of many different factors that could bias the estimate. And hence, they are able to properly quantify the effect and the benefit of this, this policy for the population. The second thing we have to offer are predictions. We are able, usually by building first a theoretical model, then testing the prediction of this theoretical model empirically with real-world data and statistical analysis, we are able to test those predictions and then you are there is two advantages. You are able to properly measure the, the, the real effect and you have an understanding of why you are observing this. So really a deep knowledge of what's the effect in, in a region and then you can do some prediction to predict for other regions, other time periods, other area and so on. And again, let me take an example to illustrate this fact. A team of researchers, some colleagues from Lausanne, among others, studied the Second Congo War, a very complex war with many groups, many network of, of groups with alliances and enmities. And they, once they understood and they built a model, theoretical model to understand and gather data to test the prediction, they are able to do several real world prediction to see what will happen uh, if we do uh, arm embargoes, what will happen on that conflict if we take out or focus our effort to take out certain groups. And we see that the predictions are not necessarily intuitive in the sense that if you aim to take out the, the largest group, it's not necessarily the best strategy. It could be to take out an armed group that is have particularly important links with other groups. And by creating a theoretical model, they are able to, to understand those mechanisms and to test them in reality and then to be quite confident about the conclusions. And the third axis is that researchers are able to provide a broader, large view of the big picture, for example, a measure of the mean or median effect for, on the large scale. For example, with my single author, I was able to measure using worldwide data for every country in the world from 92 to 2011, 20 years of data, to measure the average effect of arms imports on the violence, the probability of conflict, and the number of refugees fleeing the country who received those weapons. So this is one end of the spectrum. You understand the broad average effect for a large period of time for a large number of countries, which is very important. But on the, it's complementary to the other end of the spectrum. For example, my brother, who is a mediator in conflict regions, who understands very well and understands all the details, knows all the groups, the history, the religion, their language, and... and in each region and where the arms comes from, what's the trade uh, difficulties uh, and so on. And he's able to really understand all those factors in some specific regions. But it might be harder or not necessarily something he's willing to do to really understand what's the average effect. On average, I observe this and that in different regions. You're mo more able and at this end of the spectrum to understand precisely in that situation what is happening and precisely in that situation what's happening. Maybe sometimes the weapons have a, a larger effect or maybe sometimes it has no effect on the violence, but on average the researcher is able to measure what's the effect and I think the two are really complementary. So what do researchers in economics have to offer to the world outside academia, to policymakers, for example? Well, three things. The first, we are able to assess the effects properly of a policy. Second, we are able to do predictions using a model, a theoretical model, and then empirical model. And third, we are able to get the big picture, to show the average, the mean effect of some policy, of some actions. If you think that this video will help with the understanding of our work, feel free to share as much as possible and to make this video and those facts as visible as possible. And if you have any question, if you want to raise the discussion on those topics, as usual, feel free to comment 
on this video. Thank you very much for watching.